Bible Read Along, committed to developing Christ-centered, Bible-based, Spirit-filled believers who love God, love His Word, and love sharing it with others. BibleReadalong.com Good Biblical Morning! Yeah, welcome back to Bible Read Along. Maybe even welcome for the first time. We are so glad to have you here with us. And uh, today we will be looking at John chapter 4. Grab a Bible, grab a pen, grab some highlighters, read along with us as we go through it. Um, if you're brand new to the channel, we do almost every weekday, we go through a chapter of scripture. And we work through one book at a time, one chapter at a time. So we've been studying the book, The Gospel of John. Those videos are available on our Facebook and our YouTube and also by audio and video on podcast. So if you miss them and you want to go check them out, they are available for you. Go check them out. Otherwise, join us live. Even if you've missed, if you're brand new, jump right in. We're going to just go through John chapter 4 today. My name is Daniel. I love Jesus. He has changed my my life and uh, love his word, love sharing it with others. I love my wife as well. Hi, babe. She's in the living room. And um, yeah, this is Bible Read Along. So thank you for joining us. Let us know in the comments where you're from. Say hello. Uh, not only so that I know, but that does help on Facebook and TikTok to help spread this message to other people. The more that you would comment or like or interact and also share this with others if you have friends family others that you know in the bible read along group um, that are missing today feel free to go ahead and invite them and uh, we would love to have them with us so and i didn't set this up i just realized pinned to the top let me fix that and then we're going to get into John chapter 4. So grab a Bible, pen. Let's pin this one. There we go. Pin. Two featured. There we go. All right. Let's pray and then dive into God's word today. So, Father, we, we exalt you. We love you. We worship you. We ask that your spirit be here and lead us and guide us into truth and wisdom. Lord, that you transform our hearts, change us and mold us to be who you have made us to be. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. And if you are ready for the word of God today, type in the chat, ready, and we are going to jive right in to the word of god i see some great people joining us already if you have comments questions please put them in we will answer as many as we can at the end matthew's here from Kelowna, bc aggie joshua michelle all here from red deer area valentina from california welcome linda jones welcome so glad to have you guys here with us welcome maria nina on uh, TikTok, welcome. We are so from Edmonton. So glad to have you here. Welcome, our neighbor, neighbor to the north. All right, John, chapter four. John chapter four. I see people are ready. John chapter four. Jesus talks to a Samaritan woman. Now Jesus learned that the Pharisee had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. Um, the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was baptizing more disciples than John. Now, verse 2, although in fact, it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. So Jesus didn't baptize people. Um now, there could be argument that he maybe baptized his own disciples based on a verse in John chapter 3, but Jesus publicly did not baptize people. Uh, he left Judea and he went back once more to Galilee. Now, he had to go through Samaria. He had to, had to go 
through Samaria. This is an interesting phrase because culturally at this time, Samaria was looked down on. There, there was racial tensions, um, not really based on race, but more based on where you're from. And so there's this separation. The Jews don't consider them real Jews. Um, the Gentiles definitely don't consider them Jews. So they're in this turmoil spot. And sometimes, you know, Jesus had to go through there. Sometimes we have to go through some things. Sometimes we have to go through some things. Jesus, now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son, Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was, interesting, we don't often think of Jesus as tired, but there's a lot of scripture, actually, that Jesus took a nap, he was sleeping in the boat, Jesus was tired, you know, so this ministry that Jesus was doing was hard on him. This was physically a demanding, he crammed into three years as much ministry as he could. Tired as he was from the journey, he sat down by the well, and it was about noon, the hottest time of the day. So this is interesting because he had to go through something, and it was hot. How many of you have had to go through something? Hard times, tough times, um, grief, loss, uh, mental, mental health, mental illness, there are things that we have to go through sometimes, and sometimes they're they're hot. In the heat of the day, it seems like, how on earth are we going to get through this? How are we going to make it to the other side? Um, and so I just see that with Jesus. I see that modeled. I see that that symbolism there for us. We have to sometimes go through even in the heat of the day. Now, context-wise, historically, the heat of the day is not when people would be going to get water. Why? Because it's the heat of the day. It's the mental, it is the the middle of the day. And so you would go early in the morning, you would go later at night, because in the heat of the day, you now have the, the extra hot, you have to carry the water, you have to, it, it's a lot more burden and pressure on you to carry. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. How can you ask me for a drink for Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Little context button here. They don't, uh, interesting. Some translations here will say, Jews do not associate with Samaritans. And some will say, some translations will say, or do not use the dishes Samaritans have used. So this tells you how far separated they are. Now, I also love this because, (coughs) excuse me, I love this because this shows Jesus's heart. Jesus is not racist. He's not separating people. He's not, there's some weird stuff on TikTok, like Jesus was a racist and he had to change his ways and by, by leaders on TikTok. And I'm like, this is so not Bible at all. Jesus welcomed people, any race, any tribe, any tongue, any nation, any skin color, any gender, male or female. He welcomed them all. He brought people in, you know, and this was not, um, yeah, anyways, I'm, I'm going on a bit of a rabbit trail, but this, this shows the heart of Jesus. Would you give me a drink? Opening door, starting conversation. Jesus answered her. She said, you know, what are you talking to me for? We don't associate. She's the one putting up a wall here. Jesus answered, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Now, we've already talked about this earlier in John. Jesus was at a wedding. He turned water into wine. And now we see another water thing here. 
Um, if you had asked me, I would have given you living water. Well, what does that mean? Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. You don't even have a bucket. How are you going to give me a drink? Now, a see, again, we're seeing this comparison in John throughout the entire book. This is one of the themes, comparing the flesh, the worldly, to the spiritual. You know, you must be born again. You must be born of water and of the spirit. You must be not only of this world, but of the heavenly world. And so we see these comparisons and things that are going on here. And so Jesus, again, you know, you you are dead, but you need living water. Sir, you have nothing to draw with. The natural, for the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who, who gave us this well and drank from it he himself, and did not also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, everyone who drinks of this water, comparing flesh, normal human water, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water I give them will never thirst, spiritual water. I will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up into eternal life. And we we did talk about this a little bit. Let me raise it up here on Facebook. We did talk about this a little bit throughout John already. But we there's there's physical things and there's spiritual things. And Jesus compares these. And now Jesus says, the water I give you is spiritual. But if you had received the water I gave you, just one drink, it actually comes alive within you. It becomes a spring of water welling up within you that you have to now give to other people. This is part of the Christian life. This is why I don't think you can become a Christian and just, we talked a bit about this yesterday. I don't think you can become a Christian and not have your life changed. I think if we are truly encountering Jesus, the living water. Now, it doesn't change immediately. Sometimes it's a process. Sometimes it's slow. But when we look back, we should be able to go, there are changes in my life that have taken place because I allowed living water to come into my life. And that living water became a well that sprung up and I could now give to others. This woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so I won't go thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. Physical. She is she's going, well, then give me this water because I never, if there's real water that makes me never thirst again, give it to me because I, uh, I want it. I don't want to keep coming back to the well here in the middle of the day. I don't want to have to go through Samaria. And I don't want to have to be there in the heat of the day. So give me this water. Now, she's not understanding. Jesus is talking spiritual. She's still talking physical. So there's this, this split, this division that's taking place in, in her mind even. And sometimes we've done this. How many of us have turned to the Lord in hopes of physical um, gain or blessing or profit? You know, if you come to Jesus, everything in life is going to be smooth sailing. Wrong. That's not biblical. That's not, they may have meant well, but that is not true. And, and she's in this, 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 this tension between these two thoughts of there's something spiritual that satisfies and will always satisfy. It satisfies all of life. And then there is water that we need continually to live physically. And she's, she's thinking that if she gets the spiritual one, she's going to get the physical one. And that's not how it works. Um, the woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I won't thirst and have to keep coming to draw water. Verse 16, we're in John 4, verse 16. Now he told her, where am I here? Give me this water. He told, there he is. Um, now he told her, Go. Call your husband and come back. Now, before we get into her husband issues here, this is the heart of Jesus. Not only does he want you to experience living water, as soon as you do, he wants you to say, and maybe even before you do, 
bring others, bring others, bring others, bring others. If Jesus was saying this in modern terms today, in doing ministry today, maybe he would be doing ministry online just like we're doing right now. And he would say this, make sure you like, comment, and share it with your friends and family. Get them here. Get them connected with what the word of God says. Now the woman's reply, go and get your husband and come back. The woman replies, I have no husband. And now Jesus goes into, he operates from a spiritual perspective because he knows this woman. He knows what's gone on. He knows more about her than she thinks because all the the conversation they've had so far is, I need water. Give me a drink. You don't have anything to draw. I would have given you living water. That's the entirety of their conversation. She hasn't poured out her life story. She hasn't said all these things to him. She has just simply said, they've been talking about water, physical and spiritual. And now Jesus operating from a spiritual perspective says, go call your husband. I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, you are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is you have had five husbands and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Now, we do not know all of the history of her and her husbands. Many will speculate, oh, she was an adulterous woman. She went from man to man. And we know that because the man she's with right now is not her husband. Um, maybe, maybe they died, right? Maybe they were unfaithful and ended up, maybe they were murdered. Maybe they, I don't know. We don't fully know, but we know that she has gone through something, some trauma, some hurt, some pain that involved five other men. And now the man that she's with is not even her husband. Maybe they all died. And she finally said, I've had enough of this. I'm just going to live with a guy. So don't, don't be so quick to judge her character and her behaviors because we really don't know. Now, who is this woman at the well? It doesn't say it in this chapter. However, other sources, historians and others believe that this could have been a woman named Fotini. Excuse me, Fotini. And if you want, go look her up. Traditional um, um, faith, the founders of faith and some more traditional Christian um, organizations would actually consider Fotini a saint. In fact, they even put her on the same level as the Apostle Paul in regards to missionary work. Um, and there's some writings about her, some things you can find Fotini. So if you want to go check that out, go check it out. Now, is that in the scripture itself? No, but it's, it is historical from other eyewitnesses and things like that. So go check it out if you are interested, but let's keep looking here. What has happened? Sir, the woman said, I can see that you're a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Now, and this is what we talked about yesterday a little bit in our discussion. And if you missed it, I'm sorry, but we had a great talk about religion and relationship, both the balance, the need for both. So Jesus here is offering living water and it becomes a well. He's actually, this is an invite to relationship. If you have relationship with me, living water stirs up. Now she turns it right away to rituals and customs. Where are we going to worship? I see that you're a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but the Jews claim that we have to worship in Jerusalem. Where do we really worship? And and Jesus kind of responds here in a way that goes, this is you're you're focusing, you're majoring on a minor thing. This is not the important thing. The important thing is life. The important thing is this living water springing up in you. The important thing is gathering as many as you can to hear the message of the kingdom, the gospel of Jesus. Woman, he replied, verse 21, believe me, 
A time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. He's saying, it's not, this isn't, what I'm giving you isn't about the location that you worship. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. So now he's talking about some of the cultural differences, the division there. For salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshiper the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshipers must worship him in spirit and in truth. I love how Jesus handled this because this didn't just become a, he wasn't afraid to still speak. It it wasn't just, I want to word this carefully, acceptance. Oh, we just need to accept even if it's different views, different beliefs, different. He said, look, you guys worship what you don't know. We worship what we do know. But that's not, there's some, there's actual differences here that he points out. But then he says, there's something much greater than our differences. That is the the spirit of God. And that we are, we are going to worship in spirit and truth, not just location. It's not going to be about, well, I made it to this location. Now let's talk about church for just a minute. I believe in church. I am pro church. I think the Bible is pro community, pro church. I believe in organization, structure, even leadership roles. I believe in, in, in these things. And I think that's important, but what ends up happening is many of us will go to church just because it's the right thing to do. We better go to church. Oh, that's what my parents did. That's what I'm going to do instead of a well of living water that is flowing up in us. When there's living water flowing within us, we want to be at church. We want to be around other believers that have experienced this life inside of them. We want to be around others, but we're not limited to that. We're going to break into song and prayer when we're alone. Because there's living water within us, not just on Sundays, not just when we worship, not just when we go to a building. It's in us. So now we don't discard. We're not saying don't go to buildings. Don't do that. See, Jesus didn't say, no, don't take this out of scripture, out of context. We need both. And so there should be something in us that goes, I'm going to meet together with brothers, sisters in the Lord and in my own life, there's water stirring. There's living stirring. I, I have a desire to pray, to read the Bible, to worship. I'm going to break into song in, in my work and at, in while I'm driving and just, Jesus, I love you. I love you because it's bubbling out and you can't contain it. That's what I see here. What do you see? Let me know in the comments. We will talk about it after. Verse 25. How much more do we got here? This is a long chapter, actually. 25. The woman said, I know that the Messiah called Christ is coming. And when he comes, he'll explain everything to us. She's still thinking about where should we worship. He's thinking about, I just want people to know me and experience life. And then Jesus declared to her, verse 26, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. So when people go, um, oh, Jesus isn't God. Jesus never claimed to be the Messiah. He never, he clearly did many times. I, the one speaking to you, I am he. The disciples rejoined Jesus. Verse 27, just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a lady. But no one asked, what do you want or why are you talking with her? Um, then leaving the, this shows some of the cultural stuff that was going on. Separation by Samaritan, Jew, Gentile, separation by gender. And, and Jesus was not about that. He talked to her. He didn't care where she was from. And so we see a different Jesus here, but we're still aware. Now, does this mean the Bible is condoning that, you know, men shouldn't talk to women? And no, this is understanding the culture at the time. That's why this is in here to show us culture of the time. Verse 28, leaving her water jar. (coughs) Excuse me. 
That could be a whole sermon on its own. Leaving her water jar. The things that used to fill us, satisfy us, the things that we used to drink from, we have to leave behind if we want the things of the Spirit. Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to town and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? (laughs) They came out of the town and they made their way toward him. Meanwhile, the disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. And he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. Interesting here, because again, that comparison of spiritual and natural, you physically have to eat. But Jesus says, there's something from a spiritual, (coughs) excuse me, there's something from a spiritual nature that is more satisfying than the physical nature. This is why fasting and things occurred in the Bible and can occur today because we draw into something that goes, I'm going to receive from the spirit something that the flesh cannot give me, something that the earthly realm cannot give me. Um, So there's that. Sorry, this light keeps going out. Um. Do we want to finish this? It's quick part. We're going to finish this. So, um, so then his disciples go, who fed him? Who brought him food? And Jesus answers and says, my food is to do the will of my father spiritual who sent me to finish his work. Don't you have a saying? It's still four months till harvest. I tell you, open your eyes and look the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Even now, the one who reaps draws a wage and harvests a crop for eternal life. We're comparing again, physical, spiritual, for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus the saying, one sows, another reaps is true. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. Amen. We must always remember the people that came before us, the people that shared the gospel. Even if we lead someone to Jesus, there may have been other seeds planted along the way. There may have been other conversations. There may have been a praying grandma, a praying grandfather. There may have been these things in place. We cannot take the credit. God gets the glory. But he uses different people at different stages. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of Fotini, potentially the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So the Samaritans came to him and they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. And they actually, some scholars actually believe that this woman, potentially named Fotini, and her sons actually became evangelists. And they went and traveled to what was called the Decapolis, 10 cities or more. And they went and traveled and began to preach the gospel to as many as they could. They said to the woman, we no longer believe it just because of what you said. Isn't this, this is so powerful. We saw change in you. We saw living water in you. We saw excitement in you. We saw hope in you. We saw you proclaiming this Messiah. But now we have heard for ourselves and we know that this man really is the savior of the world. This is the whole goal of evangelism. That people would see your good deeds, your good work, not to earn anything, get anything, but because you're so in love with Jesus and he has so changed your life that you can't help but share with other people. And then they go, we saw it in you and now we want it for us. Jesus heals an official son. After the two days he left for Galilee, now Jesus himself had pointed out um pointed out that a prophet has no honor in his own country. When he arrived in Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him. They had said all that he had done in Jerusalem at the Passover. Sorry, they had seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the Passover festival, for they had also been there. Once more, he visited Cana in Galilee, 
where he turned the water into wine. And there was certain royal official whose son lay sick at Capernaum. When this man heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and begged him to come and heal his son, who was close to death. Unless you people see a signs and wonders, Jesus told him, you will never believe. The royal officer said, Sir, come down before my child dies. Go, Jesus replied. Your son will live. The man took Jesus at his word. The man took Jesus at his word. Isn't it interesting? Because he's in the middle of this. He's saying, you won't believe unless you see a sign. Oh, Israel, you don't believe unless you see a sign. You don't, you're waiting to see something. You're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting. And, um, and then this, this soldier says, I believe you. I believe your word. I believe what you're saying. And it changed his entire life. The man took Jesus at his word and departed. And while he was still on the way, his servants met him while he was still on the way. Again, I could preach on so much in this um, because sometimes we get the word of God and it doesn't change our situation right away. There's hope, there's a future, there's a plan, there's these things. And it does not change your situation right away because while you are on the way, you have to hold on to the word of God and say, I'm not letting go. I'm not giving up. God said, God promised, God made a way. God's going to bring us through it. God's going to bring us to it, to our purpose. And our, God brought it through it. He'll bring us to it. So you have to hold on while you're still on the way his servants met him with the news that the boy was living when he inquired as to the time when his son got better they said to him yesterday at one in the afternoon the fever left him then the father realized that this was the exact time at which jesus had said to him your son will live so he and his whole household believed why because living water doesn't just stir up in one person if we believe in jesus christ life comes into us we go from death to life from darkness to light and we can't contain it we have to let it out this was the second sign jesus performed after coming from judea to Galilee. Now, what did John say was the first? Water into wine. And then suddenly we have this whole talk about living water. What's the next sign here? A boy near death brought to life. Resurrection. Death to life. What's, what's going to happen? We see that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. He says these things. I am the resurrection. I am the life. I am the way. I am the truth. I am. And he begins to go into these topics Using a sign, proving his deity, who he is, what he's done, and drawing people to him to say, believe, believe, believe. And when we believe, life comes and we have to share it with others. That is John chapter 4. Um, tomorrow we start John chapter 5. We have special guest, Pastor Jake and Mullen, my pastor, um, we will be hearing from him on John chapter five. You don't want to miss it. So make sure you're back here tomorrow at 35 minutes ago, whatever time zone you're watching right now, 35 minutes ago is when we go live and you will want to be here. You'll want to bring friends and others. If you've missed videos and you want to go see them, watch them, they're available on Facebook or YouTube or podcast. Our podcast is Bible Read Along. Search it where you listen to podcasts. Um, go, go listen to it. Go through it. Get the Word of God in you. Begin to learn, study, and grow. That is it, guys. Let's go to some comments with Facebook. If there's any on TikTok as well, let me know. Morning, good morning, good morning, Phoenix, Arizona, Saskatchewan. Matthew asks a great question here. Why didn't Jesus baptize people in the Bible? Um, I believe it's because later on we see some say, I was baptized by John and Apollos and Paul. And, and it became a sense of pride. And I believe that that's not what Jesus wanted. 
He was more concerned about are you connected and committed to this living water, Jesus Christ, or are you more concerned with who baptized you? So I think this was to take away from that so that nobody could say, I was baptized by Jesus, so I'm greater than anyone. Um, People in Arizona... I believe in church. We're watching from Granada. Welcome. Janet says, yes, amen. I see exactly that also. I love going to church because after worshiping and praying with all my brothers and sisters in Christ, I feel renewed and ready to face another week in everyday life struggles. Amen. Church is not a, it's not just to keep us safe from the world. It's actually to empower us, equip us, train us, disciple us to now go out into our normal, everyday, ordinary, walking around life and bring the kingdom of God, bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to others. Sarah, thank you in sharing the word. You are welcome. People from Texas, people all over here. So welcome. We are so glad to have you. That's it for today. If you would like to follow any of our social media, it's available BibleReadalong.com. Website's right there. If you're watching on Facebook, if you're watching on TikTok, it's right at the top. BibleReadalong.com. Have all of the links for our social media. There's free prayer course. There is um, books and resources that you can buy. There's access to the Celebrate Recovery Bible, the Sharpies that we use, stuff like that. Um, There's also a way if you would like to help keep moving this forward and you'd like to financially donate, there's a way to do that. Everything can be found on BibleReadAlong.com. That's it for today, guys. We'll be back. We're going to stick around on TikTok for just a bit today. God bless, and we will be back tomorrow with more Bible Read Along. Bible Read Along. Committed to developing Christ-centered, Bible-based, Spirit-filled believers who love God, love His Word, and love sharing it with others. BibleReadAlong.com